Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In tonight's video, I'm going to be using my Skywatcher Star Adventurer uh, Pro mount down here to image the Cygnus region. So, uh, if you want to know what it's like to use a um, sort of a starter or a beginner's uh, astrophotography mount and setup, then uh, stay tuned. So this rig here that I've got is um, probably the closest thing that you might get to uh, a starter kit for astrophotography and getting into astrophotography. So uh, what I've got down here is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer uh, Pro mount, which um, is basically an equatorial mount, battery powered, um, and only works on the right ascension access. Um, but you can just place it on top of a normal tripod. Um, and then once you've got that on there and the L bracket here, you can then mount your camera on top. Um, it doesn't really matter what you use from a, an imaging perspective in terms of um, imaging the night sky, uh, apart from the fact that you'll be limited to about, I think it's two and a half kilos with this particular setup. So the setup that I've got here is uh, a Canon 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens. Um, so it's a high-end lens, but at the end of the day, you could use any, any lens that you've got access to. Uh, it doesn't have to be this kind of lens. Uh, the, obviously, the higher the magnification or the millimetre focal length, uh, the better, certainly for deep sky photography. But then you'll also find you'll have challenges in terms of actually finding uh, what you're going to be imaging as well, because you have to star hop to locate them. So the way this setup is actually set up is I've just got a normal camera tripod uh, put on the ground and leveled. I've got a um, bubble level on the Star Adventurer wedge, but there's also one on the tripod as well. Make sure it's nice and level. Make sure that the mount is pointing uh, towards the north, which is up there. So you've got Polaris somewhere up there when it gets dark. And I just used an app to make sure that it's pointing in the right direction. Um, so yeah, everything's all level, pointed in roughly the right direction. Now I just need to wait until night time to, to correctly polar align and then I can start imaging. One thing that you need to do with these is to uh, point it, when you're pointing it towards the towards Polaris, you need to get the right latitude adjustment for where you're actually located. So I'm down on the south coast at the moment, which is about 50 degrees latitude. So you can see that that's been adjusted here. So it should, this mount should be pointing as close to Polaris that we can get it before actually then looking through the polar scope that's down here. Um, and then you'll be able to look through the polar scope and get Polaris in exactly the right place within the uh, circle within the scope itself. To get that into the circle correctly, um, you have to move um, this dial here to change and fine tune the latitude, and then the uh, longitude, I guess it will be, um, you can adjust with these screws here and it rotates it uh, clockwise and anti clockwise. That will get it as close as you can uh, so the mount is level pointing to Polaris and that should help guiding as much as possible. So the other piece of equipment I forgot to mention was a remote shutter release. Uh, this one here I picked up from Amazon. It's a wireless remote shutter, it sits on the hot shoe and then connects down into the camera down here. And it comes with a uh, battery powered wireless controller that you can uh, trigger manually using the shutter button on here or you can also program it to uh, take a certain number of shots for a certain number of period in terms of intervals. And uh, you can just leave it taking the photographs whilst you're sat inside, or you can sit and watch this go around if you really want to. Um, but yeah, I tend to just leave it. One slight annoying thing that I forgot to bring down with me is actually a dew heater, which um, you'd wrap around this lens, uh, typically sort of five volt, uh, powered USB powered ones that I use uh, just to keep the front element of the lens warm 
kind of hoping, I need to check the forecast to see what the dew levels are actually like as to whether or not it's going to get too cold or not, so I might have some problems with that later on. Uh, one not necessarily fixed to this, but one thing that might help is actually if I go and get the lens hood for this, that might keep the element uh, not as exposed to um, the coolness of the night sky, so I might be able to get away with not having a heater, but I have to try it and see what happens. So uh, I'm pretty much as set up as I can possibly be at this uh, at this point in time. Um, I just uh, need to wait until it gets dark and uh, enjoy the sunset. So uh, manual focusing uh, with a normal camera lens is always a bit of a challenge. The best way of doing this is to uh, use the live preview on your camera, zoom in 10 times and then just move the focus knob sort of or focus controller back and forth until you see it going in and out of focus and just do your best to find that middle point. Uh, if this is a starter rig then you're not going to have a uh, batten off mask so you just have to do the best you can so I've got everything set up uh, now everything's polar aligned uh, I've focused in on my target uh, I've got 70 millimeters pointed up at uh, the Cygnus region uh, I've captured the uh, North America nebula as well as the uh, Seda region as well. Um, so all I've got left to do now is to uh, just set up the remote shutter release, um, set that off and then just leave it to it. 